So I owed some money to some dangerous people. Went to the casino. <laughs> and lost it all. <laughs> Came home. I'm not going to leave my bedroom till I find a way to make 50 grand. Because he's in pain. And what's worse, he realizes that he borrowed money from the wrong people and his life is on the line. Because I realized that money is bullshit. It's not even <laughs> fucking real. And I don't have it. So that was the plan. I was like, all right, cool. The girls are going to be webcam girls. Webcam girl business. Interesting. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here. Hey, Lindsay from Dallas, Texas. And we have another reaction video here with Andrew Tate. We're going to stay in the Tate train. We asked, who do you want us to react to? Many of you just said, man, Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate, Andrew Tate. But in this episode, we are going to react to Andrew Tate on the Full Send podcast hosted by the Nelk Boys. Never heard of them. Apparently, they're um, claim to famous prank videos. But uh, Andrew Tate continues to take the internet by a storm. This is a freaking phenomenon. And um, I've been around for a minute and I've never seen anything like this happen with a with a person just like this. I mean, I'm connected with a lot of people that um, have their own podcast, influential podcast influencers, but I've never seen me just going onto Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and shorts and reels and TikToks all over the place about this guy. I keep scrolling up and they just happen to stumble across this guy named Andrew Tate. Uh, what a phenomenon happening in our world today. So uh, let's take a look at this. I've not seeing this, so you and I are experiencing this for the very first time. Apparently, my team tells you that there's three things that we're going to talk about here. How he made his first million, how he learned about money, and his views on women and men making money. So let's check this out. So I owed some money to some dangerous people. We won't tell that story. But I needed money fast. And uh, I had 70 grand. I needed 100 to stay alive. By the way, it's always easy to ask money from the wrong people because they know how to prey on those that are desperate. And that's why we advocate always getting your credit squared away, getting your money squared away, don't overspend, because that way you stay out of trouble. You don't gamble, uh, unless of course you know the odds and you can control the odds, but again, that's not gambling. But when you put yourself in a position, by the way, I invest in myself, I'm a gamble. When I first started my business, I'm a gamble. I don't know how long I was gonna stick around. I got involved in the insurance business, I got my insurance license, had no job, single father, three kids. That was a gamble, but at least guess what? What gave me confidence is I was gonna get up and work every morning. It was gonna give me confidence that I was a student of business. It was gonna give me confidence that I burned all my ships. I'm not going back to the Marine Corps. This is it, and I'm not going to college. I'm not selling for three, four, five jobs. I had to figure out this insurance business. So that was a gamble. I controlled the odds. I had confidence in it because I know I was gonna get up and get to work. So uh, back to Andrew Tate. I'm sitting there and I'm like, you know what? Sometimes, Tate, God just loves you and you just get lucky. Amen to that, man. God loves you. And guess what? There's only certain doors that he can open, but at the same time, too, certain doors that only he closes. That's right. If you love God, you follow your faith, guess what happens in desperate moments? What do you trigger? Do you trigger your fear or do you trigger your faith? Many times I triggered my fear, and I learned the muscle of triggering your faith. So listen, if I could do it, you can do it. You're going to go to the casino, and you're going to make the 30. So I told Tristan my plan. He's like, bro, what if you don't do it? It's like, bro, if I don't do it, we're fucked anyway. Like, we, they're going to get us eventually. We're going to end up dead. So I took 20 of the money, went to the casino, <laughs> and lost it all. <laughs> Came home. Now I'm 50 Gs down. <laughs> so I said to Tristan, we got a week to pay this money. I'm not going to leave my bedroom until I find a way to make 50 grand. By the way, man, what a way to create a new way to make money. And for most people, you're not desperate enough, you're not in pain enough to ever make a change. You're comfortable. And sometimes some of you are comfortable being broke. Sometimes you're comfortable just not making it. Sometimes you're comfortable watching other people win and next thing you know, you're trolling them online and you're dropping negative comments on their stuff because you see them winning, you're not winning, but yet you're still comfortable with that. And so there is no glory and honor of being broke, especially when you have a clear mind, you have all your hands and feet, arms, limbs, there's no excuse for you not to make money. Many people either choose to be lazy or they choose to be productive. Every day you got a choice. Now I just said, well, Matt, you don't understand my situation. You don't understand my situation. Listen, so many people go through some stuff. Everybody go through stuff. This guy's going through stuff. You're going through some stuff. The difference between you and me and other people that make it is they choose to either engage their fears and limitations or they choose to engage your faith and uncharted territory and the exploration of that and the journey towards that process. So I'm sitting in my room 
So I started thinking, okay, let me approach this logically. I'm a very intelligent man. Let's do this. What do I need? Let's start at the very beginning. What do I want? It sounds very confident. What is money? So I started researching what is money? What is money? How does it work? Federal Reserve, fractional reserve banking, interest, inflation, da da. And by the time I got to the end of about a day and a half's research on money, I was really pissed off because I realized that money's bullshit. It's not even <laughs> fucking real. And I don't have any. So now I'm double mad. So, so, so now is it not only bullshit, you don't have it. You don't have the bullshit. But listen, man, money is right up there with oxygen. If you didn't say money is not important, money's not a factor in your life, and money's not a factor in your happiness, friends, money is a factor in your happiness. Let's check out this article. It's an article here on Forbes talking about the new study shows that more money buys more happiness, even for the rich. Even though you got money, money still buys you happiness. Let's check this out. The bottom line is the reporting of happiness in relation to reported income. The study found that like the 2010 research, both life satisfaction and experienced well-being increased with income. Listen, I've had problems with money and I have problems without money. And I'll tell you this, if I'm going to face life with problems, I'd rather have money. At least money can kind of isolate and push back some of the problems. For example, problem comes its way, boom, cut a check. Another problem comes its way, boom, cut a check. Another problem comes its way, cut a check. You can solve a lot of problems with money, but when you're broke and those same problems come at you, they just compound the effort and they actually add a lot to the stress. It takes away confidence as a man. It takes your confidence away as a provider. It makes you self-doubt yourself. The pressure starts to kick in. It's a real feeling. The next thing you know, you are cynical about life. But if you turn that emotion around, say, listen, what can I do? Just like Andrew Tate right now sitting in that room for a day and a half studying about money because he's in pain. And what's worse, he realizes that he borrowed money from the wrong people and his life is on the line. Let's continue. So now I'm double mad because I'm like, this is fucking imaginary trash linked to nothing and I ain't got none. So I was really pissed. So I'm watching all these fucking videos and doing all this research on like assets, liabilities, blah, blah, blah. And then I got a piece of pen and paper. I've been taking notes the whole time. And I got to the point where I was trying to write down my assets. So I got a BMW. What's that worth? 22 grand something. I had a, a rented apartment. Uh, I'm big and strong, but I'm already fighting. I'm smart, but I'm already using it, trying to make money. I'm just writing down everything I have. And I had like these five girlfriends from fighting all around the world, right? So I thought, well, are the girls <laughs> an asset? Five, five, five girls. That's probably why I had no money. Okay. <laughs> By the way, I'm not judging here. I lived that life. I know it's like to have multiple girlfriends and multiple conversations and multiple game all at the same time. Multiple headaches. One is enough. Well, they have beauty. Beauty's valuable. So I guess they're an asset. Maybe they can like lend me the money or. By the way, beauty is a temporary asset because after a while, age kicks in, gravity kicks in, and then you lean on your experiences and the value they create throughout your life. And that's when, in my opinion, that's when the real beauty comes through. So I wrote them down. Anyway, as I was thinking, again, what can these, maybe these, can these chicks help me in any way? One of the girls offered to let, lend me like 5Gs or something. It didn't really help. And <laughs> can these chicks help me in any way? And I'm not a ruthless person. I'm really not an evil person that they try and paint me on the internet. I am not the guy who's going to put a bitch on the track. I'm not the guy who's going to hard pimp a bitch, make her fuck dudes. I'm not that guy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's move along here. I don't like those kind of things. I don't want anyone to touch my chick. Strip club, maybe, but then to open a strip club, you need money, right? How the fuck you open a strip club with no money? You need to build a strip club. It takes money. So I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm Googling. I'm, I'm, it's very intriguing so far. Let's continue. On the internet, like strip clubs or, or I was Googling like uh, remote jobs, London, trying to see if there was some remote work I could tell my girlfriends to do online remotely to get the money. And I could tell the guys, look, I'll have the money by this day. And then between me and them and more of the incomes, I could pull the money and get the money. Boom, boom. And while I'm looking up remote jobs in the corner, one of them little videos comes up. Talk to live girls now. You know, those fucking things are on the porn sites. So I clicked on this advert. There's some chick sitting there talking to dudes, bring money, bring money on one of these websites. And I was like, I wonder how much she's getting. So then I start looking into this webcam thing and I realized these girls are making bank. These girls are making fucking money. So that was the plan. I was like, all right, cool. The girls are gonna be webcam girls. Webcam girl business. Interesting, webcam girl business. By the way, I'm just thinking right here. How come there ain't no like webcam dude business? By the way, maybe for the gay community, but for the, the heterosexual community, how come there's no chat room or webcam for dudes talking to girls. 
lonely girls. You know, it's, it's very interesting here that uh, when it comes to relationships, man, guys will probably tend to feel a lot more lonely than women. Listen, if you're a young woman, you're hot, you're attractive, you got some wits about you, you can carry on a conversation, most likely you'll probably never feel lonely. Uh, but most guys, even some of the most well put together guys, if they don't know how to talk to members of the opposite sex and how to articulate themselves, a lot of them will feel lonely. You know, a lot of men will find themselves, and I just rather work with my hands. A lot of men would just rather find themselves in their cave and they're happy with it. They're isolated. And uh, that's not healthy. So I, I just find it interesting that he started a business with webcam girls because men are so lonely out there that they need businesses like this to satisfy that emptiness they got going on in their lives. And it's apparently millions and millions. I don't know how big the business is, the industry is, but apparently big enough for this guy to talk about it and make him, make him a lot of money. So I originally thought I'll set them all up remotely and they'll do it all from home and send me the money. So I flew all five chicks in, none of them knew about each other, nothing, thank you. Sat down at a nice restaurant, me, Tristan. By the way, is that a glass of whiskey? <laughs> that's, a, that's a glass of whiskey. That's what I'm talking about, great hospitality. He flew two, I flew five, seven girls. So look, about to get rich, this is my plan. I'm gonna do this, three left, two stayed. And that was the beginning of the empire, <laughs> two stayed, bought some laptops. That was a piece, I ain't doing this. Three decided to come in, by the way, he's recruiting. He's recruiting. For those of you who want to make a lot of money, you just can't do it yourself. You can make money by yourself, but if you want to make a lot of money, and this guy, this guy's case, he needed to make a lot of money. What he did is rec he recruited. He assessed the assets and the friendships and the relationships that he had and said, okay, let's start a business. That's what a lot of business people do. So a lot of entrepreneurs do. It's what you do when you decide to go work for yourself. What do I have? What do I know? What skills do I have? Who do I know? What can we do together? And so if you're looking to do something big in life, that's a, that's a gem, it's a tidbit there, is assessment of what you currently have and how you maximize those things. And also, I'm waiting here what the arrangement is, what type of win-win relationship and arrangement can you make? Said, look, you're gonna get this much percent, I'm gonna get this much percent. Wasn't exploitation, they want to do it. They were like, yeah, this. I wonder what the percent was. Now, when the girls were at the computer working, I was at the computer the entire time. Because another thing I learned from doing this business, I learned something about women, is that they are intrinsically, I don't wanna use the word lazy, but I will. They, they, have no, they have no interest in world conquest. They want to be comfortable. If you show a woman how to make $1,000 an hour, she'll think, I can, work a I can work two hours a week. If you show a man how to make $1,000 an hour, he'll think I can make 18,000 hours. That's right, we're gonna dominate the world. We want to conquer the world. <laughs> yeah. We want all of it. We want True. all of it. True. True. Well, it's interesting how God wired us that way. It's funny how God wired us that way, that uh, there's a, you, you got your hunter-gatherer type of human nature about us, you know, where men are out there to hunt and bring home the bacon, bring home the kill, and the woman's there to process the kill, to fry the bacon or to process the, the hunt, the food, make the food. Um, interesting. Right, so <laughs> I was like, no, we ain't got time for that. We gotta make all of the money. But we made this much today, not enough. There's more money in the world, it's ours. All of it's ours. Yes. I got to the point where I was so obsessed with it. I'd be sleeping in bed, because the chicks would sleep with me one each side. I'd wake up to go piss. <laughs> and when I, by the time I finished pissing, I was awake enough to say, all right, two hours sleep, that's enough, get up. Back, back, back to work. We're gonna fucking kill it. So me and these two chicks, and they were about it, right? Because they're getting money as well. Me and these two chicks, we started, we just started. By the way, I tell you this, oh, my wife, Sheena, she wants to go out and kill it. So even though he may mention this, but my wife, the big reason why I chose to marry her because uh, she was a high school softball uh, studette. She got recruited by University of Pittsburgh, full ride scholarship. Uh, she got involved in sales and medical sales, selling hospital beds. That's how I met her, selling hospital beds at the, at the hospital because I was doing a financial workshop at the hospital. But yeah, my wife, I'm just reflecting on my wife. My wife wants to kill it, to be one of the best to ever be known to build an agency, to build an organization, to lead an insurance company. I think my wife's wired a little bit differently. And for me, by the way, that's very attractive to me. Start fucking hammering the webcam game. So what I did is I unplugged her keyboards and plugged a new one in from me behind the screen. So the chicks would sit there and hit a keyboard that wasn't plugged in. And me and my brother, and eventually some- <laughs> So they're, they're playing the chick uh, and because they know how men think. So they're communicating to other men 
and the men think that it's the woman talking to them, but because they know their own nature, Tate knows men's nature, he's going to use that nature against them to have them stay on the webcam and drop more, drop more money to stay on the webcam with these girls. Interesting. Staff I trained would do all the talking. The girls were just pure, just famosers, just laughing. <laughs> okay. Out, and they were talking to fucking ice cold hustlers. Mm. We were taking their money, all of it. And they, they come and say, <laughs> what kind of, all of it. We were fucking milking them dry. I By had way, these guys. It's funny, ice cold hustlers, as much opportunity they have in real life are still resorting to talk to women online that they have no real intimate relationship with, no physical touch with, and they're still dropping their money just to have interaction with them. Wow, ice cold hustlers, oh, man, they're losing their money. I don't know, that, by the way, that's the problem I had when I was coming up, and this was a part of my life, please don't judge me, that when I'd go to strip clubs, like what's the point? For me, what's the point of going to a strip club? You get all worked up, she's grinding on you, she's throwing her stuff in your face, but you can't do anything about it. I mean, what's the point? And so I just chose not to go to strip clubs and actually find out how to improve my game to begin with, improve my ability to sell and improve my ability to talk to members of the opposite sex. But uh, anyway, again, please don't judge me. The, again, this is a YouTube channel dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you can become a first-generation cash flow millionaire and follow your faith and strengthen your faith. But uh, listen, we're, before some of us have a strong walk or a faith, we had a bad walk with the other side of the world. So, hey, if I can do it, and there's so many out there that uh, may want to see the other side. Selling their houses, life savings, loans, all of it to me. Give me it all. So like, and it's, it's basic shit, Damn. right? You'd have Did a you guy. feel bad or no? Fuck no. To give a solitary fuck. <laughs> you tell, like, I yeah. don't give a fuck. If, if, you, if you run an alcohol store. You can't feel bad for people that pay no, for that shit. Yeah. If, no, you run but, a, if you run an alcohol store yeah. and, and, and most of the people you sell to enjoy alcohol, but a couple of the people you sell to are alcoholics, do you feel bad? No. Uh, no. Right. So if you come and you if you come and you enjoyed it and spoke to the girl and spent what you could afford to spend, cool. If you turned up and you're an idiot and got a loan out, is that my problem? No. So by the way, I don't have a problem with it either. I mean, I'm an investor in a company called Uncle Near's Whiskey. So uh, but at the same time too, I also am concerned about the abuse of it. So as a side note to the point where we had these guys falling in love with my models, serious, big time in love, right? Sending crazy money. And they were convinced they were going to meet the chick. This is almost where I kind of felt bad because they were like, can we meet? I've sent you $200,000. Can we meet? Can we meet? Can oh, we meet? And, and the problem is- What was is, the most that one person sent to a model? Total. Million? Dang. Wow. wow. Just to stay on your, line chatting. You don't, you don't feel bad at all. Why the fuck would I yeah, care? I don't feel bad either. So as, as I wrap stuff up, I got a couple of problems here that just come to mind as it relates to this. Because listen, the, the way I look at the world today is through the lens of, of a, of a faith-based biblical perspective. Because I've tried it doing my way for many, many years. For 30 years of my life, I tried doing it my way. In my way, short term, help me out. But long term, lonely, empty, without. And so when I'm looking at how you make money this way. Sure, you can make money for the short term, but long term, I don't know. A reminder of a proverb, it goes like this. This honest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. And the famous oracle of Omaha named Warren Buffett said, listen, a lot of people don't like to listen to him because he teaches people how to get rich slowly. And so there's nothing wrong with the process of compounding your wealth, especially if you know you sleep well at night and your pillow's soft. You don't have to look over your shoulder you have to worry about people stabbing you back. You definitely have to worry about people killing you. And so, sure, this is a easy way, quick way to make money. The exploitation of sex and exploitation of our animalistic behavior. I'm also uh, want to touch on this in terms of his views on women and men making money. And uh, for the three girls that uh, helped him out, well, listen, congratulations, you, you, you had your moment in time. But I'm also thinking about the morality and the values and principles of women today making money. I'm thinking about my wife. I'm thinking about my, my two daughters. Um, thinking about the cousins I have in my family that I love, that I want to make sure I protect because I want to make sure that they make their money in the most upstanding way possible. So therefore, they don't have to look over their shoulders and they can feel good about themselves, not just for the short term, but for the long term. Because when I was looking for a wife, when I was looking for a partner to do life with, to raise a family with, is a guy that was a single father with three kids already 
how do I not repeat the process? Because this was costing me a lot of money, it was costing me a lot of emotional and mental health, and it was causing me to be in a situation where I was starting to lose hope. So when I got dialed in to what a woman is in my life, now you can take this for whatever you want. I could be wrong about this in, in, in your life, but in my life it's worked out. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10, follow me on this, and here's how it goes. A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. So in other words, if you have a woman, not just of external beauty, but of noble character, she's worth more than money. She's worth more than precious stones, extremely valuable in your life. Next verse, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. In other words, she is a woman of value and a husband has confidence that she's not gonna be skipping out on him. When she goes out with her girlfriends, he's not worried about her, flirting with members of the opposite sex while he's not around. He's got full confidence in her. Next verse, she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. So the woman that he's talking about, that's not eager, that's not wanting to take on the world. Listen, a wife of noble character, if you find her, she wants to work. She's eager to get to work. Next verse, she is like merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still at night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. Doesn't sound like a lazy woman to me. Next verse, she considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard, which means to me that she's also a student. She's also learning about things. She's got her own cash. I remember when she and I first started dating, I said, babe, we got a, we got a trip to Vegas. She didn't know it was an annual convention for our company because we were still dating. I tell her about the, the company stuff. I said, babe, we're going to Vegas. Can you meet me there? She goes, yeah, let's go. And next thing you know, without waiting for me to buy her a ticket, she goes, babe, I got my ticket booked. I got these days, these days, boom, I'm, I'm solid. I'm good to go. Really? She didn't wait for me to spend my money to make sure she goes to Vegas. She took the initiative. She didn't wait for me. She's investing her money into this relationship. I had so much profound respect for my wife when she did that. Next verse. She gets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In other words, this woman is working night, day, round the clock. She's excited about making a contribution to the household. In her hand, she holds the staff and grasps the spindle with her finger, fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. This woman of noble character is generous. She cares for other people, not just herself. Next verse. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Yes, she's wearing the latest fashion styles. She's a woman that feels good. She's looking good. She's feeling good. And when it happens, she does good. And obviously it pays good. Her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. In other words, a wife of noble character has a husband of noble character. He's respected and admired amongst his peers and leaders of the city and the community. Next verse. She makes linen and garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. See, if there's something that she's selling, it's the handiwork of her hands, not her body. Next verse. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. And wisdom is nothing more than knowledge times experience. That's wisdom, and it's done over time. And by the way, you can have a lot of wisdom in a short period of time based on as much knowledge you're willing to acquire and experience the way you're willing to endure. Next verse. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Again, referencing that wife of noble character is not lazy. She's looking out for her husband. She's looking out for her children. She's looking out for her household. Next verse. Her husband arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, her husband also praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Husband's edifying and giving words of affirmation to his wife. Next one. Charm is deceptive in beauty is fleeting. Interesting. Beauty is fleeting. But a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. I hope this serves for you as a reference. If you don't know what a woman is in your life, a woman should do in your life. I thought I was going to be talking about money here, but one of the biggest reasons why men fail with their finances, why I failed early in my life with my finances, because I chose the wrong woman. I chose the wrong woman to have a relationship with. I chose the wrong woman to, to decide to marry. Why? Because I didn't have a biblical reference. I didn't have a reference. I thought it just felt good. 
We'll do this. We'll figure it out. We'll wing it. Well, if you do this right, in terms of your money and how you make your money, and the woman and partner that you choose to have in your life, watch what happens to you. And I'm looking back and reflecting on my life when I decided to marry my now wife and commit 100% of my emotions, my energy, my resources, all into Sheena, all into our family, all into what we're doing together. It exploded my business. It exploded my happiness and enjoyment. That doesn't mean though we didn't have arguments. Of course we had arguments, but the D word was never in our vocabulary. We decided working this together. We decided that God was gonna be the one that we would weave our life in and around. And life has been blessed because of it, and more so the people that we're in business with, our clients, they've been blessed as a result of it too, as well. So I didn't think you expect that from a reaction video here on Andrew Tate about biblical references, but hey, that's the way I'm wired. That's the way I see the world these days. Not to say that I'm perfect, but I'm looking to be perfected as I build my relationship closer with God and deepening my faith as it relates to some of the deepest subjects in our world today, which is money, relationships, in our faith. With that being said, guys, let me know your thoughts, your questions, what other videos you want me to react to. You agree with me? You don't agree with me? Uh, please put it in the comment section below. Uh, we got other couple reaction videos here for you to check out too as well. If there's other people that you want me to react to from the lens of leadership, from the lens of a faith-based millionaire, first generation cash flow millionaire, let me know in the comment section below too as well. All right, that's a wrap. If you found value in this video, please consider hitting a like. If you watch a couple of our other videos and you think that our YouTube channel is a solution for what you feel may be a need in your life, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next video. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your mighty smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to smart. Continue to smart. I'd be mighty smart today.